I'm Susan, and I'm going to be reading chapters four and five of Amelia Bedelia Means Business by Herman Parrish. In chapter two, Amelia Bedelia sees a beautiful bicycle and she falls in love with it. In chapter three, she and her parents decide that she will earn enough money to pay for the bike. In chapter four, she gets her first job. Chapter four, you're hired. Since the next day was Saturday, Amelia Vidya and her parents did what they always did on Saturdays. After Amelia Vidya's swimming lesson, they had lunch at Pete's diner. Pete's was mobbed. They had to sit at the counter instead of their favorite booth. Amelia Vidya loved sitting at the counter. She loved being close to the action, hearing the orders call out, watching them filled, and seeing everyone working together to make the diner run smoothly. While they waited for their food, Amelia Medea asked her parents what kinds of jobs they had when they were growing up. I did all sorts of odd jobs, said her dad. My job doesn't have to be odd, said Amelia Medea. I don't have to be a lion tamer or something unusual. It could be a normal, regular job, so long as it pays me a lot. When I was young, said her mother, I worked as a waitress. I made buckets of money. My customers always gave me big tips. That sounds kind of fun, said Amelia Badea. Did they ever tip you so much that you fell over? Before her mother could answer, the food arrived. Their usual waitress was so busy that the owner of the diner, Pete, served them. Sorry, folks, he said as he put down their plate. I'm very short-handed today. Amelia Medea looked closely at his hands. They looked like they were regular length. Not too short, not too long. Then she looked at the french fries in front of her. Yum, she said, and she gave the ketchup bottle an extra hard squeeze. The ketchup squirted right out over the top of the fries and onto Pete's clean white apron. Hey, shouted Pete, ketchup on the loose. Amelia Vidya thought she was in trouble until Pete chuckled and asked, do I look like a French fry to you? No, said Amelia Vidya, but you do look like you need some help. Do you have a job for me? Pete gave a look at Amelia Badia's parents. They both smiled and shrugged. We come here every Saturday, said her father. She knows your routine. Her mother added, she's a good worker. Amelia Badia will do exactly what you tell her to do. And she's on vacation now, so she has spare time. Pete leaned forward and gave a good look at Amelia Medea. I wonder, he said, can you cut the mustard? I've never tried that, said Amelia Medea, but I sure can squirt the ketchup. Pete laughed. You sure can. Okay, I'll give it a try. You're hired. You can be an official Pete's Diner waitress in training. Amelia Medea reached out and gave Pete a Firm handshake. Was that his shorthand, she wondered. Honestly, she felt like hugging him. So instead, she hugged her parents. Congratulations, sweetie, said her mom. That's my girl, said her dad, and you landed your first job. You're hired. Those were magic words to Amelia Medea. Those words meant that her Dream bike would soon be a reality. She gobbled down her fries, said goodbye to her parents, then slid off her stool and skipped into the kitchen. Their regular, wait regular waitress, Doris, their regular waitress, found her a uniform. This was the smallest size we've got, honey, Doris said. Doris slipped the uniform over Amelia Medea's clothes. She tucked here and folded there and finally, after half a dozen safety pins, 
and have been pinned and a bunch of twisty ties have been twisted and tied. Amelia Badia was ready for action. You look nervous, said Doris. Don't worry, I'll show you the ropes. Follow me. How cool, thought Amelia Badia. What kind of ropes would Doris show her? Cowboy lassoes, mountain climbing ropes, those thick lines that tie ships up to the pier. Maybe this would turn out to be an odd job after all. Well, well, said Pete, when Amelia Badia and Doris came out of the kitchen. Look at you. I can't, said Amelia Badia. There's no mirror. Well, believe me, he said, you look like a real waitress. Now, I have only one rule. Can you read that? He pointed to a sign over the cash register. Amelia Badia read the sign out loud. The customer is always right. Someone, probably Pete, had underlined the word always in red. Just remember, the customer is always right, said Pete, and you'll never go wrong around here. Wrong, thought Amelia Badia? What could possibly go wrong? Chapter five. Oh, when right was wrong. Amelia Badia went right to work. She did all the little things that Doris usually did, but didn't have time to do on such a busy day. Amelia Badia refilled ketchup bottles, poured more salt and pepper into the shakers, folded napkins, and got more sugar and sweetener packets. Most of all, she had fun. Then the unthinkable happened. Suzanne and three girls from Amelia Badia's class walked into the, through the door. Amelia Badia sank down behind the counter like the Titanic. What should she do? She was excited to tell them about her new job, but she also felt super embarrassed in her waitress uniform. Amelia Badia reached up to take a peek inched up to take a peek. The girls had chosen a booth where they couldn't see her. Phew! Now, if she just stayed out of sight, stayed quiet. Amelia Badia! Ah! Amelia Badia nearly jumped out of her skin. Luckily, it was only Doris. Calm down, honey, Doris said. Your mom was right. You are a good worker. And here's a treat. You deserve it. She handed Amelia Badea a strawberry milkshake with tall in a tall, frosty glass. Thanks, Doris, said Amelia Badea. As she took her first sip, a big man walked in and sat down at the counter. He was wearing a bright orange baseball cap and a patch on his shirt that said, Mike. Amelia Badea offered him a menu. No thanks, he said. I know what I want. Good, said Doris. That's as easy as pie. I'm in a big curry, he said. My truck is still running. No problem, said Doris. At Pete's Diner, fast service is a piece of cake. I'm sure glad to hear that, he said. Please bring me a big piece of cherry pie. Doris turned to Amelia Badia and said, this is a simple one. You can fill his order while I go talk to the cook. I'll be back in a few. Amelia Badea smiled and nodded at the man. Then she went to the dessert case. As she stood there gazing at the yummy desserts, she realized that she had completely forgotten what the man had ordered. She turned her brain inside out. Was it easy as pie? Was it a piece of cake? Was it easier to bake a pie than a cake? You don't have to frost a pie, so that's easier but you don't have to roll out dough for a cake. Then again, hello there, Mike called. Did you forget me? I'm really in a hurry. Amelia Badea said, said to herself, fast, said Amelia Badea to herself. That's a piece of cake, that's it. She brought him a piece of cake. Cake! He, she said, I ordered pie. Sorry, said Amelia Badia. I'm just learning. 
I can tell, said Mike. And I'm late. Bring me a big piece of cherry pie and step on it. And then Abadia dashed off to get his pie. But now she was more confused than ever. Why did he want her to step on it? She remembered Pete's rule. The customer is always right. She dashed back to Mike and put his pie on the counter. At last, he said, sighing happily. As he lifted his fork to take his first bite, Amelia Bedilla climbed up onto the counter. What are you doing? asked Mike. Hey, hey, get off the counter. Just then, Pete came out of the kitchen. What's the commotion? he asked. Amelia Bedilla, what are you? Amelia Bedilla raised her foot and stepped on that tasty slice of pie with all her might. Gooey cherry pie filling spurted all over the counter, all over Mike, and all over Pete. Mike leapt to his feet. That does it, he yelled. I'm out of here. Wait, Pete called. He grabbed an entire cherry pie from the dessert case and raced to the parking lot after him. By the time Pete came back in, Doris had returned and she and Amelia Bedea had wiped off the counter. Amelia Bedea felt awful. It didn't help that she could hear giggles coming from a certain booth. She'd recognize Suzanne's laugh anywhere. I'm sorry about your apron, said Amelia Bedea to Pete. Pete looked at his apron and said, at least it matches the ketchup stain. Doris laughed. Amelia Bedea smiled. Pete sighed and shook his head. I don't know what to say, Amelia Bedea, except that I have to let you go. Go where? asked Amelia Bedea. Go home, said Pete. I'm sorry. I'm sorry too, said Amelia Bedea. I wanted to see those ropes and cut some mustard, and I really wanted a big tip. I've got a tip for you, said Pete. You should get an office job. I don't think the world is ready for you to be a waitress. Doris helped Amelia Bedea out of her uniform. Then she slipped $5 into her pocket. Here, honey, she said, you are the best waitress in training I've ever had. Then Amelia Bedea left and began the long walk home. The end. I hope you enjoyed chapters four and five.